You are watching UNO with Dr. Amrish Saxena. Hello students, today is Monday, 25th of November 2019. Water is essential for life. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, while addressing the 50th conference of the state governors, urged them to inculcate the message of developing the habit of conservation of water among the youth and the students' community. But his minister, that is Jal Shakti Minister Gajendra Singh Shekhawat, while addressing a reply in parliament on Friday said that there is no proposal to make access to clean drinking water a fundamental right. Now, India has an international obligation in this regard. In 2010, UN passed a resolution 64 oblique 292 which was signed by 122 countries. This resolution recognized the access to safe and clean drinking water as a human right. This resolution expected India and other signatory countries to make sure that safe, clean affordable and accessible water is available to each and every person in all the uh, respective countries. And if we look at the domestic front, Supreme Court also have reiterated this in many of its judgment that water is basically covered under Article 21 and it is part of right to life. And if I can refer to one important case which is regarding Narmada Bachao Andolan filing a case against the construction of the Sardar Sarovar Dam, though the Supreme Court allowed the construction of the dam, but then in its judgment the Supreme Court categorically said that water is an essential thing for human life and it should be part of the fundamental right. Safe and clean drinking water is essential for our health. And if we refer to a data given in 2018, every day seven people die because of consuming polluted water in our country. And if we further look into the statistics, during 2014 and 2018, almost 12,000 people died because of the waterborne diseases and four mainly the waterborne diseases which created these casualties. These are the cholera, typhoid, diarrhea and viral hepatitis. There is an scarcity of water in India and also in many other parts of the world. And if we refer to the Jal Shakti minister's answer given in parliament on Friday, he said that there is a 15% reduction of the availability of per capita water. And these figures pertain during 10 years. 2001 and 2011. In 2001, the per capita availability of water was 1,801.6 cubic meters, which came down in 2011 as 1,544 cubic meters. And further, the minister informed the parliament that the underground water table, there is a reduction of 22 percent. This means 22 percent water, underground water is either dried down or is in the critical stage. Now coming to what the government has planned with regard to conservation of water and making the water available in the pipeline. If we look into the current data in rural household 30.80 households have access to tap water and in urban areas 70.60 households have access to tap waters and the government has planned to increase this figure to 90% of rural households by the year 2020. But given the conditions, it appears like a pipe dream. Moving on to another story in Israel, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has been indicted of fraud, bribery and breach of trust. 
and this indictment has come because of his relationship with the telecommunication tycoon Shaul Ilovitz. Now, this is outcome of a long running investigation against him which was happening for uh, many years and what this relationship resulted into. In fact, Benjamin Netanyahu provided regulatory benefits to Shaul Ilovitz in return of a positive coverage, a good coverage in his publications that is the Times of Israel. This indictment has come at a time when Israel is already facing the phase of political instability. This year only two elections have happened in Israel, but no government has been formed, meaning thereby no political party has been able to combine the political parties, the smaller political parties to form the coalition and then set up the government. Neither Benjamin Netanyahu nor his political rival Benny Gates. So, uh, the conditions are that if this kind of political stalemate continues, there may be another election before the end of this year. To tell you something more about Benjamin Netanyahu, he is the longest serving Prime Minister of Israel. He is on this post since uh, 2009. Earlier also he was the Prime Minister from 1996 to 1999 and for now he can run his uh, politics even with these charges because no action for the time being is possible to be taken against him in view of the immunity that has been granted to him. But once the parliament, the Israeli parliament sets up and then it strips off the immunity, then obviously he has to face the criminal prosecution. Now to tell you the impact of what is happening in Israel in other parts of the world, particularly the United States, US and Israel have been having very, very close relations and particularly Benjamin Netanyahu has proximity with the US President Donald Trump. Trump has done everything possible in support of Netanyahu and even provided him support during the last elections. And otherwise also the kind of policies that US has been pursuing with regard to relationship with Israel only in the 54th edition of this program I told you about that that the US has legitimized the settlements of Israel in the West Bank. And it has also recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and even shifted its embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And not only that, on the Golan Heights also, it has accepted the claim or the legitimate control of Israel. Despite the US support, it seems very difficult that Netanyahu will be able to save his skin as far as the criminal cases are concerned and as far as his political decline in Israel is concerned. That is all in today's edition.